In this video, you're going to learn how to linger in worship. Coming up. Hey there, my name is Spencer Cormany from LeadingWorshipWell.com, your daily dose of practical worship leading tips. If you want to find those tips, head over to Instagram or Facebook at LeadingWorshipWell, where I'm posting new worship leading tips every single day. But you're here on YouTube, so go ahead, hit subscribe down below, and let's get into it. Because in this video, we're talking about how to linger in worship. And I think a definition is in order because we have to define what lingering in worship actually is. And the definition to the word linger means this. It means to stay in a place longer than necessary because of a reluctance to leave. To stay in a place longer than necessary because of a reluctance to leave. And I can think of no better place to apply that definition than in worship and in the presence of God and enjoying the presence of God. We want to teach our church that it's okay to stay in a place longer than we think is necessary because we're simply reluctant to leave. Like I want to be in the presence of God right now and I am reluctant to lead, leave. We want to teach our church that. So one of the ways you can do that is to actually lead your church in lingering in worship. And so what that might look like is you sing a bridge and then you realize like this was a really powerful time of worship for our church. So maybe you repeat the bridge again and then you get made fun of for repeating the bridge 20 times. But we are lingering because we are staying in a place longer than necessary because we are reluctant to leave. And maybe people want to make fun of us for that. That's okay. So linger that way or you can maybe put like an instrumental section after a chorus. Maybe there's a, a powerful truth in the chorus that you want people to reflect on. And so you set up that moment and just allow people to linger in that truth and reflect on it for longer than they think is probably necessary. And all of these things allow people to move a little bit deeper in their time of worship. Like they start to think about things on a deeper level and connect on a deeper level with God and with each other, depending on how you set the moments up. So I want to show you in this video how to linger in worship. Now that we know what lingering in worship actually means, I want to share with you these five steps of how to lead your church in lingering. And the first is simply this. It's to plan the moment out. You want to plan those moments of lingering in advance. And I get it. Like, it's it's really cool whenever these things happen spontaneous. And I kind of alluded to that before whenever you sing a song and you realize in the moment that something is powerful and you want to linger a little bit longer on that. But I think it's also important to plan these moments out because if you've never done it before, chances are you're not just going to recognize those moments in the moment if you don't have that skill of leading people and lingering in the first place. So you've got to plan the moments out in advance. So how do you find these moments? Well, you do what I've been telling you to do for the past two years and you worship through your set list. And I just wanted to find that again. There's running through your set list where you learn the set list musically, but then you worship through the set list and you look for these extra spots and you just use it as a personal time of worship and think, where would I linger in this set list? Is there a specific bridge that I want to linger in or after or a chorus that I want to linger after? And you plan that moment out. So you identify those moments by worshiping through your set list. And then you say, okay, this was a powerful moment of lingering for me in my personal worship time as I worshiped through my set list. This might be a powerful moment for my church to linger in as well. And then you run it through that filter and see if that might be true. So step number one, plan the moment out in advance. Step number two of lingering in worship is that you actually have to lead your church in the moment. And I've seen this mistake way too many times. I've made it way too many times because you were watching this YouTube video and you're like, okay, Spencer's talking about lingering in worship. That sounds like an awesome idea. And so I'm going to get on stage on Sunday and I am going to linger in worship. And so you play through a song and you've never lingered in worship before. And you're playing through the song and you're like, wow, that was a really powerful moment. And so you step back from the mic and you just have your eyes closed and you're soaking in the presence of God. 
but you never led your church in it. You have a responsibility to lead your church in worship. And if you're leading a moment of lingering, leading a moment of lingering, then you need to lead people in that moment. And it can't just be about you. Like you've watched this video. So now you know what lingering in worship is, but chances are your church most of the people, they have no idea what that's about. So you have to lead the moment. So what's that mean? That means setting the moment up. So if you've recognized or if you've planned in advance a moment to linger, set that moment up for people. Let them know um, what, like this truth that we just sang was really powerful. And I want us to take a moment to reflect on that and think about what it means for your life. And then you can step back from the microphone and let people linger. But if you just randomly step back from the microphone and people aren't used to it in your church, then they're just going to be confused. Like they aren't going to know what they're supposed to do. So if you're trying to teach your church to linger in worship, you can't just model it. You also have to lead them in that moment. And then eventually you'll be able to just model it and they'll be able to follow along with you. Speaking of modeling things. Step number three is to actually model the lingering. And I know I just said, don't do that, but we've just got to get the steps in the right order because you can't skip step number two of leading your church in that lingering moment and just model it. You have to set it up so people know what they're doing and then you model it for them and show them what that looks like. So what's it look like whenever you linger in worship? Like think about your personal worship time. What are some of the things that you do? You probably have your eyes closed, right? And you're thinking about the truth that you just sang. Maybe you're a spontaneous worship person and you are singing spontaneous words of worship. Whatever that looks like in your church, model what you want lingering to look like. And the second part of that is that you shouldn't be the only one modeling it. Your worship team, your entire worship team, everyone from the other people who are on a microphone singing with you all the way down to your bass player, they should all be modeling what lingering in worship looks like too. So maybe you need to include your team in on this process and let them know at worship rehearsal, hey, between this bridge and this chorus, we're going to be lingering a little bit and just give them a brief description of what it means to linger in worship and then actually practice it with your worship team and lead them through that moment first. And that'll help you to know how you can best lead your the rest of your church on Sunday. So step number three is model it. Show people what it looks like to linger in worship. Step number four for lingering in worship is now, okay, we've planned the moment, we've led our church in that moment, we've stepped back from the microphone, and now we're modeling it. Step number four is to gauge the room or read the room, which I talked about in this video from last week. So I won't explain the process too much here. If you didn't watch that video yet, go check out that video. I teach you how to read the room. But reading the room is simply seeing where people are at and reacting accordingly. So that's important all throughout your time of leading worship, but especially whenever you're lingering. Because whenever you're lingering, you aren't singing anymore. You're, you've stepped back from the mic, and it's okay to have your eyes open. I know part of it is keeping your eyes closed because you want to model it, but you also want to be attentive of where people are at and lead them accordingly. So maybe you step back from the mic and you realize people, people don't really understand what we're doing here. And so you can step up to the microphone again and just lead them in that moment again. There's no shame in that. Maybe you didn't explain lingering clear enough the first time. And so look at where people are at and react accordingly. Maybe you see that they're they're like really catching on to this moment of lingering and you need to li linger a little bit longer than you thought you were originally did. So whenever you're leading these moments and modeling it, also be gauging the room, reading the room, seeing where people are at, and reacting accordingly. And then finally, number five, to lingering while leading worship is to give it time. And this means two things. First of all, give your moment of lingering time like longer than you think is necessary, which is funny because that's kind of the definition of the word linger, to stay in a place longer than you think is necessary. So give it time, linger longer than you think is necessary. So if you're like 30 seconds in and you think to yourself, 
Okay, that was enough. I um, I feel a little bit awkward right now because I've lingered for a little while. Just give it like 10 or 15 more seconds because chances are the people of your church, they can handle just a little bit more and you want to just push them just a little bit further and you also want to push yourself a little bit further and you just want to have the opportunity to linger. It feels really awkward when you're not really doing anything whenever you're leading people and you're just standing there and maybe strumming a few chords, but those are honestly some of the most powerful moments. So linger while you linger, like give it time a little bit longer than you think is necessary. So that's the first way that you need to give it time. But the second way that you need to give it time is just give it time for your church to catch on. Probably the first time you linger in worship, people, they're going to be uncomfortable. They aren't going to know what you're doing if you've never done it before, which is why you need to explain it to them. But as you give it time and you do it this Sunday and then maybe a couple Sundays from now, and then a couple Sundays from that, and you eventually work it into your regular worship leading routine, and you're lingering regularly, your church is going to embrace that and catch on to that. And I really think that it can move your church to a deeper place in worship when you push them past just the idea that we just gather on Sunday to sing through a straight set of songs from beginning to end with no stopping in between. So give it time to grow in your church. So I want to challenge you to linger in worship this Sunday. Stay in a place longer than you think is necessary because you are reluctant to leave. Thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Spencer Cormany from leadingworshipwell.com. I want to share with you before you go a free training that I put together. It's called Five Tips to Instantly Improve Your Worship Leading. If you haven't checked out that training yet, there's a link in the description below. It's a free audio training where I share with you five tips that will instantly improve your worship leading. They aren't hard to do. You just have to know them and make the effort to do them. Thanks so much for joining me today. Until I see you next time, keep leading worship well. Keep lingering well.